All right, let's jump into the film room with Greg. Uh, let's look at Matt Patricia. And you mentioned this a, a couple of minutes ago, Greg. Patricia is struggling on his second and long play calls, and, and that propped up uh, a number of times in this game. You have three specific plays you want to break down. Let's start with the uh, opening drive, second and nine at the Green Bay 18. Yeah, so they've been driving down the field, and 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 I think Matt Patricia is fine when they stay ahead of the sticks. They, you know, they're running the ball and they're in second and manageable. But he 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 keeps running into trouble on, you know, second and long. So you're looking at this play. It's second and I think on the play sheet it's actually second and nine. So you know what you're thinking here. He ends up calling a, like a wide receiver, like a little screen here, but I, I don't understand the call on second and nine, like, okay, second and three, second and four, second and five, even when you think really you're trying to get them in man coverage, you're trying to hopefully, ideally they they're bringing pressure. So they're shorthanded. So all of a sudden you do a quick throw, you got to, you got to throw back. So they call this, this is second and nine. And you see the Packers, they're just sitting back in zone. They have, you know, they, they have two deep safeties. They have their all three cornerbacks. The Patriots are in single back, one tight end, uh, which is Johnny Smith. They have little Jordan Humphrey, of course, in the slot, Nelson Aguilar, and then to the right, Devontae Parker to the left. The Packers cornerbacks are all about five to seven yards off the receiver. And to, you're hoping to actually get the Packers to bring more pressure on this play and they're going to run stretch zone play action and then throw back. And they end up rushing they, they end up rushing 5 and they have it set up with the offensive lineman. The problem is is that the cornerback who's on Devontae Parker recognizes him not going deep and he comes up and he just snuffs out the play. I mean, if, if if for some reason you can avoid that cornerback, the Patriots have a touchdown probably. They have two offensive linemen out in front. But to me, that play was defeated by the call. Like it, it was, you as a play caller, you're anticipating what defense are they in. You don't call that play unless you think the defense is going to be aggressive. And I, they just they just got completely busted on that. Uh, the second play I wanted to look at was um, that second play, Greg. While you're looking for the second yep. play, I'll jump for a second because you said something about uh, DBs playing off of wide receivers. I, go back to the overtime. Um, it infuriated me that the Patriots in overtime, when the Packers only needed, you know, 10, 15, 20 yards for field goal range, that their defensive backs for some reason were playing 10, 15 yards off the wide receivers. They were playing way too soft on mm -hmm. the outside. And Rodgers played a game of pitch and catch twice and just absolutely stole like 15, 17 yards. And I did not understand. Uh, that strategy by by Steve Belichick and company to have your DBs in that scenario playing such soft coverage, you were just welcoming the Packers to move it downfield and get into field goal range. It was as if you just didn't want to give up a touchdown. You would deal with losing by a field goal, but don't give up the touchdown. And I, I just thought that was ridiculous. They should have been playing up closer to the wide receivers, making it more difficult for Rodgers instead of making it so damn easy. Okay, so Greg's found the uh, second play here. We're at second and eight. This is the next drive. So this is the second drive of the game for the Patriots. Second and eight. They're once again in Green Bay territory at the mm -hmm. Green Bay 35. Yeah, they're at, they're at field goal range right now. They're at the 35. Even if they just they don't get anything on these next two plays, um, they kick a field goal and they're up, they're up six nothing. This is going to be another quick hitter. They're in, they're in shotgun. Harris is in the backfield. Hunter Henry is ex-ISO to the right. You have trips to the left. It looks like Parker, uh, I think, Aguilar, and little Jordan Humphrey, of course. So this is another play where they're trying to run. They love – Matt Patricia loves to run these rub rats. We see it a lot in the red zone. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get Harris out of the backfield. I guess he's anticipating pressure, but, again, it's second and eight. It's second and nine, whatever. It's long yardage. Why would the Packers bring – maybe if you think they're at, at – you know, once we, they get in the field goal range because the Patriots – the Patriots would blitz in this circumstance because they want to knock you out of field goal range. Maybe he's anticipating that. Maybe he's seen it on film. But basically what they're trying to do is – Hunter Henry is going to run a rub. They think that Quay Walker 
the rookie linebackers in man coverage against Damian Harris and Hunter Henry's going to run a pick play on him. The problem is the Packers are in zone coverage and they actually bring Walker on a blitz. And now, now the guy that Hunter Henry's supposed to pick is coming on a pressure. Now the safety comes down. Henry can't pick anybody and the safety's there to make an open field tackle for a two yard loss. That sets up the next play is when Hoyer gets knocked out of the game on a sack. We'll look at that real quick. Now it's third and ten. At the now it's Bay third and place. ten. And this is the play. This is the play where Isaiah Wynn thinks he's going to get help from Ramondre Stevenson with a chip. He sets up a little bit to the inside. Stevenson doesn't help him. And then there's the sack. And and so you know, that was just a debacle. They were in field goal range, and the sec- to me, the second down play call was the key thing, and that that led to them being knocked out of field position, set up third and long. Gary just beats win because he doesn't get a chip, and end of Brian Hoyer, end of that drive, they have to punt. These are golden opportunities, and it goes back as Greg searches for the third and final play he wants to show you all. It goes back to the the situational play calling of Matt Patricia. And, you know, look, it's a very difficult gig to have, offensive coordinator at the NFL level. But you, you have to, in critical situations, you have to know uh, what play gives you the best chance to, to move the football against what defensive look you might have. Yeah, that's the big thing. You have to anticipate and you have – you have studies, you have statistics to say, hey, they're a high percentage blitz team or man team on, you know, at, at this point in the field, uh, you know, with this score, like this is what they're going to do. And that's really where the genius comes in play calling is that you're outfoxing the defense, that you're anticipating what they're going to do and you have the perfect play call for that. That's coordinating. Yeah, and we're one month in and what we see consistently from Patricia is a failure to diagnose the right play at the right time, especially when it's a critical situation. And if that continues, drives are going to stall, drives are going to be dead. You're going to be in field goal range like you just saw and then lose 15 freaking yards from where you're set up. And instead of being at the Green Bay 35, when all is said and done, you're, you're by the 50. Situational play calling is a big weakness right now for this offense. Hence, it's a big, big weakness for Matt Patricia. All right, the third and final play Greg wants to show you in the film room. We have a second and six. This is from your own 29 with uh, 523 left in the game. Yep, they had just run for four yards, Damian Harris, second and six. They can go down and win the game with a field goal. They hang on to the ball like they did in Pittsburgh. That opportunity is here. Second down was the crucial play. And what you'll see here is they are under center. Uh, Harris is the lone back. They have uh, Aguilar, I think, to the top of the screen. They have Hunter Henry on the field. They're going to bring little Jordan Humphrey in motion to uh, the, the close side of the field. This, we've seen this before. Every Patriots fan knows. All right, alert, alert toss crack here that Humphreys is going to come in here, even Preston S- Smith. The, the Packers uh, outside linebacker points to little Jordan Humphrey. He knows he's alerting to them running a, a, that Humphreys is going to crack down on the outside linebacker, Preston Smith. And normally the Patriots run a toss out here. They block down and they try to get a play. So you're either anticipating, which wouldn't be a bad play in itself at second and six, you're anticipating that. Or if you're going to go for play action here, you're going to run play action off of that toss crack because that's what everyone's expecting. If you toss the ball fake like you're tossing to Harris, now all of a sudden everybody flows that way. And then if you still have the ball, somebody should be open. The problem is they don't run toss crack action. They run draw action. And you watch the linebackers, nobody moves. (laughs) <laughs> Nobody falls for play action, just sort of like last week. Like, little Jordan Humphrey should be open if there's real toss crack motion, except everybody's covered everywhere. There, there's nobody open. 
Zappi does hold the ball long. I, I don't fault him for taking the sack because he couldn't get outside the pocket and get rid of it and just move on to the next down. Maybe he tries to scramble or something, but he's never been in this position. But to me, that you didn't marry what you were showing and the run action, to me, that was a play calling fail. It led to the it led to the play being a failure and contributed to it. And to me, that that is another illustration of Matt Patricia just not being an experienced play caller.